Hope you're having a good Friday. The um, obviously the injury report, you know, everybody's heard it now. Um, you're a big, you know, next man up. That's your philosophy. So I guess the question is, who is or who will be the next man up when it comes to filling in the shoes of Tremaine and Matt Milano? Yeah, we've got some pieces with AJ and and uh, Tyler Matikevich and and Tyrell Dodson. Um, you know, we just signed Deion Lacy there, and and so. Um, We've got some some things that uh, are in the are in the works. Uh, we'll just have to see how it plays out for game time. Uh, any talk internally of reaching out to Lorenzo Alexander at this point, or is that a little premature? Yeah, no, that's a little premature. We have a, we know how we feel about Lorenzo. Um, uh, love him, love his family. Uh, once a bill, always a bill. In this case, you know, we're two days out basically from the game, so. You know, unfortunate that we we don't have Tremaine and, and Matt and, and Delshawn, but at the same time we've got to rally the troops and and uh, next man up, as you said, Josh. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, John, Scott. Good morning. Um, good morning. I don't think we've asked you yet about the decision to uh, have Jake separated from everyone else. Uh, what went into that, and is this something where he's you plan on him being away from the team? you know, indefinitely? Uh, I think we're, we're taking it one week at a time, you know, John. So it's responsibly distancing um, is really what it boils down to and making sure he can continue to grow and develop, though. You know, I, I think there's some veterans out there, some other teams that are doing it uh, with some older veterans, if you will, that uh, are staying home. And in this case, for us, it's got to be a, a delicate, healthy balance because of Jake's youth and and, and us uh, trying to give him the chance to still grow and develop um, because he hasn't had the, the experience that those other uh, veterans have at, at other teams there. So he's done a great job with it. The players have really done a great job encouraging him. And, and uh, so we're, we're fortunate that we have a young man that, that can handle it. I, I guess I should ask, uh, what exactly is he doing? Is he away? What, where, what, how are you, uh, you guys managing this? Well, he's here. Um, he's just, without going into all the specifics, which would take a while, um, he, he's here. He's, he's just, again, responsibly distancing um, throughout the day uh, and yet trying to get work in the necessary work that he, that he needs to develop and grow. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Sean, uh, Matt Perino here. Um, you, you mentioned Dion Lacey. How, how, how much of a luxury is that to bring a guy back into the mix that's obviously so familiar with you guys and what you guys do? Yeah, Matt, are you at Spot Coffee right now? I am. I am. One of my favorite places, man. One of my favorite places in Orchard Park. Mike Sandwich every time. <laughs> Good for you, man. Um, uh, you mentioned about – Dion, you said? Yeah, Dion Lacey, just getting him back in the mix, somebody that's obviously yeah. familiar with you guys. Yeah, great to have him back. Um, you know, one of the joys, as I mentioned before, of coaching is watching these young men develop. And, uh, and in this case, uh, Dion's uh, been away from us uh, a year or so here. And, you know, just to see him, the additions he's had to his family on a personal level and, and the way he's growing. And, and uh, so just real, real cool to see. And, uh, I think the other piece is the energy that he brings to our football team is is important. You guys got a look at uh, Preston Williams and um, Devontae Parker last year in in that first matchup, and they they played pretty well. What what can you expect in going up against them in in this passing attack on Sunday? Yeah, two long receivers uh, that have a lot of skill. Uh, the quarterback trusts both of them, and and uh, they do a great job on the on the jump balls, um, and that was shown in, in the New England game and against good competition. So uh, we've got a lot of respect for them. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, um, was curious about uh, Vernon Butler because he wasn't able to give it a go last week. And uh, so he got a couple of full practices in. So what is his outlook for this? Yeah, he looks good. Um, he looks like he's heading in that, in that direction of being able to go, Joe. And um, so he's had a, to this point a good week of practice. And we're going to look to see how he does today again. Um, before we make that final decision, but at this point, it looks, it looks good. Um, question for you on Josh Norman, because you guys shut him down after a few, getting in a few practices. So what is his outlook? Is the injury a bit more significant than maybe you were, uh, at, you were uh, at first thinking? 
what is uh, what is going on with Josh right now? Well, he's attacking the rehab process uh, at a high level, which we appreciate. Um, you know, I don't think it's any more serious than we initially thought. Had a, did have a little bit of a setback last week, uh, which which is what led him or led us in this direction. So, um, you know, we'll see in the next couple of weeks here what it looks like. Last one for me. Um, are is Tremaine or Matt in jeopardy of uh, going on IR at all? Uh, too early to tell at this point. Um, so we'll just take it one day at a time. Hey, Sean, Josh Reed again. Um, what did Cam Lewis show you um, to kind of earn that spot on the 53, man? Oh, man, just I, I love his story. Uh, I think it's a big part of who we are. Stories like like this, like Cam's, um, you know, local guy obviously at UB that undrafted and um, being at his pro day, everyone you talk to, uh, coaches, other teammates that that Cam had on the team, then staff, trainers, all that was the guy that they talked about in terms of his intangibles, his determination. Um, and so uh, I think he just really showed us more of that uh, since he's been here. And tough, uh, good football player. And, and so, um, you know, he got his first taste of real action last week, which was good to see. And, and uh, we'll see where he goes this week. One last one. Um, you know, week one in the books, week two already kicked off last night. The COVID testing has been through the roof. I mean, I don't know that the numbers could be much better than what they came back. Are we not talking enough about that? Because let's face it, if there were a dozen players that came back positive, it would have been all over the headlines. Um, how, how impressed maybe are you? Or did it go as well as you could have thought? Yeah, well, I mean, I think um, it shows, it shows the, the thought that's been put into it, um, you know, at the league level, at the ownership level. And then, you know, each team is probably a little bit different, but much the same. And I think that's taken discipline and will continue to take discipline as we move forward. And I'll tell you, I'm a routine guy. And so it's just become a part of my routine every morning, get the nose, nose swapped and, and uh, you know, going down the window and, and then pulling into my parking spot. So uh, I've, just, I've just built it in like many, I'm sure, to, to my routine. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. All right, sure. Hey, Sean Salmeorana. Good morning. Um, Good morning, Sal. What could you, I mean, Tyrell Dodson's a young kid and he looked like he was playing okay before he got hurt last week. What can you reasonably expect from him given the situation he's going to be in now with your two best guys um, not playing? Yeah, you know, I think the guys around him more than anything need to pick up their play. And, uh, and that's part of the next man up approach. Uh, so Tyrell um, you know, doesn't have a lot of experience but he's a guy that we're confident in at the line of scrimmage on the defensive side in, in addition to his special teams role. So, um, you know, we'll just take it one, one play and one day at a time. And, and as far as A.J. Klein, obviously it's a veteran guy that you brought in. Does it kind of fall to him now to be, I guess, the leader of that, of that second level there? Well, it does. Uh, AJ's, a, A.J.'s a more than capable to do that. Um, he's a guy we have a lot of trust and confidence in, a lot of faith in, and, uh, you know, we were with him in Carolina for a few few back then, but um, you know, he's a guy that we uh, we expect to come in and, and uh, do a good job. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean. Uh, Jay with Buffalo News. How you doing? Good, Jay. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, going back to last season, uh, coming out of halftime in the third quarter, the team was outscored. Um, I think it was 11 points, point differential. Not by a lot, but you, you were outscored in third quarters of games last year. I know you're constantly evaluating your process. Is there anything that you can kind of pinpoint as to maybe you want to work on with the team coming out of halftime to come out a little bit stronger in, in third quarters? Yeah, a lot of things we need to work on, Jay, to your, to your point, and, and that would be one of them. Um, you know, last week we came out, I thought we went three and out on offense. And, and so, um, you know, you go back and you say, hey, okay, what do we need to work on? That's one of them, and, and how can we get better at it? So – Ongoing, ongoing process, ongoing growth mindset as far as uh, and around that, especially coming out in that third quarter there, yeah. Thank you. Sure.